page six now, new ties and new troubles in East Asia. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is coming back from Russia, meeting with his counterpart, President Vladimir Putin. North Korea state-run media reports that Kim told Putin, quote, peace and security on the Korean peninsula will entirely depend on the future attitude of the U.S., and North Korea will guard itself for every possible situation. However, many experts suggest that move may be an attempt by North Korea to shop for better deals, seeking to hedge against the possibility that talks fall apart with the U.S. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Barry, thank you very much, as always, for joining us. So what do you take of this summit? I mean, the issue with the United States kind of is a little bit of the back burner ever since North Korea was failing to make concessions. What do you make of this newfound bromance, if you will, between Putin and Kim? Kim is trying to play poker with the world's leading political poker player, namely President Donald Trump. He's attempting to use leverage with the uh, the Russian leader Putin against Trump in the hopes that Trump will back down. And what he is forgetting is he's playing poker against the guy that was ready to walk away from NATO until NATO said, okay, we'll pay our fair share. When Trump made the threat to the EU, pay your appropriate percentage of GNP or I'm out, the world went insane. They condemned Trump. It was going to be the collapse of the world's oldest uh, strategic alliance. And a year later, what's happened? Everybody has doubled or tripled their contribution to NATO. This is the same thing. The irony here is Russia has very little to offer North Korea except for some minor support and maybe photo ops. Russia's broke. Korea is broke-er, and the ability of Russia to help Kim is de minimis at best. And I think you bring up a good point there, because one thing that people have been critical of China for is not doing their fair share in this whole bargain. I mean, they still kind of support North Korea economically. And so is it better maybe for Kim Jong-un to have this relationship with Putin compared to having that relationship with Xi Jinping in regard to the U.S., where we're trying to get out of the North Korean peninsula, which is, of course, denuclearization? China is run by a thug who is a brutal dictator. The difference between the two countries is China is a huge trading partner of the United States, while Russia isn't. However, as everyone uh, that's aware of current events knows, neither country is our friend. Korea is stuck, and they're getting smaller and smaller in a box with a tighter lid on it, and he's desperate to find some leverage to save his economy in the face of brutal sanctions that is crippling what is already a bankrupt country. And I don't think China or Russia will give him anything he wants because it will alienate the U.S. And the U.S. is the big uh, gorilla in the room. And North Korea literally has nothing to offer either one of them other than we don't like the United States. Could you help us? And that's not going to sail in either one of those ponds, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the White House has said it themselves. You can either do business with North Korea or you can do business with the United States of America. Exactly. If, you are, if you're interested in economics, I, everyone knows the answer to that. But so speaking of the White House, what right. do they do moving forward? Do they just kind of keep going on with the approach that they've had? Kind of that stern, hard approach that Mike Pompeo has really put on the table since he took over as Secretary of State? Or do you think that they, may, they need to make adjustments now? Uh, absolutely no question in my mind, Alex. Stay the course. Korea is playing poker with a couple of twos and a seven. They've got no leverage on the United States. And the longer the sanctions continue, the more unstable the Kim regime uh, will deteriorate to in North Korea. I think strongly that if Trump stays the way he is, whether he wins re-election or not, I don't think Kim has an alternative but to come back to the table. Remember, they just he just left Putin with nothing but some photo ops and no promises after a couple hours of chit chat and um, prearranged press conference speeches. That doesn't create any leverage. If Trump stays the course, I think eventually Kim collapses and says, OK, no more nukes. We'll shut it all down and uh, no more missile program. Now, really quick, before I let you go, I only have a couple of seconds. But what happens if President Trump does win in 2020 and Kim Jong-un has kind of thrown away negotiations, maybe starts launching missiles, something like that? What steps did the United States take in order to really step down on North Korea? I, I don't think there's a question that what 
Trump has in mind is something similar that, to what is being enforced against Iran. If there's a complete blockade of North Korea, it'll be over soon. The entire regime is dependent on some money being created. And if that country is strangled from the outside in and nobody attempts to screw with the United States to cross that blockade, which I think will be the case either with China, Russia, or any Southeast Asian trading partners, I don't think Kim has a choice but to make the deal that he's promised to make several times in their meetings, both in Hanoi and previously uh, with President Trump and with Mike Pompeo. I think it's just a matter of time. Trump wins, Kim loses, and the nuclear missile program is over. Yeah, and there was talks of another summit. Something tells me that's being put on the side for the time being, especially after the recent comments by North Korean media. So it'll be something to keep an eye on. But Barry, thank you very much for joining us tonight.